Mr. President, uh, there has been predictions, you know, after the genocide, you know, what will happen to Rwanda, that Rwanda will be stuck um, in the past, they will, they will be stuck in the vicious cycle of violence. But here we are, 17 years on, this country clearly has moved forward. And I think what most people uh, would want to understand is why and how this country recover, you know, way better than other countries who are equally caught up in wars in the past. Yes, we have made uh, very good progress in the recovery. And it is true, there were those predictions. There are people who could see nothing better than a, a failed state in Rwanda. Uh, well, unfortunately, even irrespective of the facts, some uh, people still have uh, negative views about our growth. Good progress has been made, and happily, it has been made because of the people of Rwanda, the people of my country, are resilient people, are people who have learned a lot of lessons uh, from our history, from all that has happened that uh, tore this country apart. It was very tragic, um, as tragic as you can have it. And um, yes, uh, the only way to go was forward. We had sunk so low that it wouldn't have gone lower. Not at all. <laughs> the only way is now to come up, and that's how we've managed together with the people of this country. Everybody understood this, that uh, after all, what tore apart this country originated from ourselves. It happened because of bad politics, because of bad leadership. If we change that, we could have different results. So we had to start by encouraging our people to have confidence, to see themselves as people who can bring the change we need, even if we have to build on the support of others and there is the, we, we have received huge, huge support from others. But that is just really support. In the end, if the people of a country like ourselves don't you know, feel that it is our responsibility uh, to make the change we need, and it won't happen. It doesn't matter how much money or support or, you know, cheering that, you know, from outside, nothing will happen unless we take the lead and own the process and uh, do what is proper for us to, to make the progress we need. But you can't deny the fact that leadership has played a role. In fact, I interviewed one of your ministers. He said, um, every ship needs a good captain. How did you become that good captain? Well, uh, to be honest, I, I will say I don't know. <laughs> but I'm happy to, to be seen uh, as a good captain uh, by my people and by others who appreciate what progress there is in, in, in our country. What I am is not unique to me. I'm sure many others can, can be the same or can do the same. The point you are making is leadership is key. There is no disputing that. I will also say the same. In fact, leadership probably makes the whole big difference. I remember you actually talking to the boys just now. You did mention something about self-discipline. Could that also be something that other African leaders are lacking? Self-discipline and discipline generally uh, is important and it has a lot uh, to do with whether leadership will end up being good or bad. And all that has to be supported by the vision. You must have goals. You must uh, be clear about what the problem is and what it takes to deal with the problem. So what can these boys learn from your captaincy? <laughs> well, a number of things. You have to have a good management team, yes. a good coach, and above all, a good team. Indeed. So one thing connects with the other, and at the same time, discipline helps to maximize the capacity 
of the team to get to the good results. And they should push them, they should push them hard. Because people will even have good talent, but if they don't exercise discipline, it will be wasted. It's what I tell my own other people. Put your thought into it, put your energy into it, do it the best way you can. It's good for you. Above all, it's also good for others that you live with or in the society where you live. And how good it is will very much strengthen how good you are. Indeed. It sounds like um, you're taking football straight away to government and you can see the same uh, uh, um, similarities. But um, I will stick with football uh, right. uh, for now. And um, since we're talking about the boys, um, I know you are a huge football fan, uh, but sadly, although you're supporting the, the wrong team in the UK, a weak team, Arsenal, <laughs> I wish... <laughs> Welcome to Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm still sticking because, with Arsenal, but... Uh, come on, your wife, <laughs> your son, they're there, yes. so <laughs> welcome. I think that it's good to have a divided family on that. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess, I guess the question I want to ask here is that why is it that you're so passionate about developing a strong football team? It's one place, it's one gathering of people that will go beyond all kinds of divide. You know, it, 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 there's something specific to sport, but it goes beyond sport Indeed. and it connects with many other aspects of life. Yeah. It doesn't matter what race, it doesn't matter what tribe or, or, or religion or color or, you know, it's sport. It's Things you're all, all together, together yeah. and you all want to win. Yeah. And you want to win in a spirit of competition. The, the, the one you are playing with, the other team that you want to overcome and win over, is not your enemy, just an opponent. Yeah. You know, you, you approach it like you, you want to win, they want to win. In the end, whoever wins, you, you, you part, you know, not as enemies. It's very interesting. So we support football, and volleyball, and basketball, and tennis. It brings in young people playing different kinds of sport. It brings in the minds of the other people who are not playing, yeah. the spectators, the fans, and everybody. It's, it's a point where there is a roaring of everybody mm. to something of a common, you know, cause and common good and. You know, so you end up benefiting from the sport per se, but you even end up benefiting beyond sport. So that, that, that's, that's how I, I, I strongly come to be connected with the sport and with the football in particular. Uh, the, the, through it, it is an expression of the nation. Mm. Yes, mm. You, you know, running people together for, for a good cause and, you know, through that for other causes as well. But given what you just said, Mr. President, what would you say this nation can learn from sports in general? Team spirit, working together for a common good yeah. and bringing different talents together to win together. It, 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 from sport there is that you learn, there is unity of purpose and it also elevates the, the, the image of uh, a nation uh, beyond sport really. And what would you say is the vision for Rwanda's future and what role will young stars like this have to play? We want to keep having young people follow in the footsteps of those who are older than them. Last year we had the under 17. So tomorrow they have developed into under 20, they still play. So there is that flow of uh, effort and energy into success, whether of sport, and I always want to take it beyond sport to anything else. Mm -hmm. And is there space in this um, vision for the old and the not so educated? 
Oh yes, it's, it brings in uh, all kinds of people. Yes, but we want to make sure that actually we reduce on the numbers of the uneducated. We are always uh, trying our best in the investments we make as a country to make sure that uh, everybody gets education and everybody is able to realize their talent in different ways and be able to achieve what they can achieve, uh, not for themselves, but also bring all of this together into what the country can achieve. Mr. President, as an African, I cannot sit here and tell you that I'm not worried about um, sustainability, about continuity, because this is one thing that I have seen in, in, in one of the people that I admire. You know, you are one, and Jerry Rollins, um, when he was in, in control, is another one. But when Rollins left, um, there has been a bit of um, problems here and there. And, you know, I cannot sit here and not worry about um, the future of Rwanda. When someday you, 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 you decide I'm going, what w would you say will be the challenges of Rwanda in the future? There will always be challenges. Even today we are dealing with a lot of challenges. And uh, there will be that day. And I definitely think about that. The best way that can be answered is the kinds of investments we are making today in people, yeah. in building institutions, strong institutions, in making sure that what we are investing in today, and what we are doing today, actually has increases the potential to produce as many people as could possibly yeah. carry on with what has been achieved. In the Absolutely. Past. This is, this is the thinking, and the action is already happening. But for sure, I, I cannot sit here and, and claim that I know nothing will go wrong, you know, there is so and so, we will come and do this, and no, I generally believe that will happen. But I cannot point to how exactly it is going to happen with somebody else. Maybe it will happen better than it has been in my case. Or it will be worse. And that one, there are no guarantees that things can't go wrong. But with continued strengthening and building of institutions and continued exposure of our young people, talented people through education, through other possibilities, I think somebody will step out from this group at some point. And, and do as good a job as uh, any of us has been doing. What would you say your government or as the captain you need to deliver to the people? What I need to deliver to our people, first of all, the confidence in themselves. There is no problem that is insurmountable. And our history has proved that. Now, it will need leaders to lead them through this. And I think by now they know the kinds of leaders they need. They should be able to select good leaders for themselves and to also hold them accountable and make sure that that's how it goes for a long time. We want for our people prosperity. Why have other people achieved prosperity? I always ask myself and I always ask my fellow Rwandans. If world over we have all these wealthy countries setting the standards, I said, how have they come to that? What is it that would stop us achieving that as well? The other day they invited me to, to talk to people uh, at a prayer breakfast and I was telling these uh, good Christians that uh, what is being a good Christian? It's not how much you recite the Bible, it's not how much you repeat to people what you know, good people need to do. It's also about you doing it. Indeed. Yes, how much do you exercise what you know is right for you to, to do and that is good for others as well. How much do you do it in the real sense? Indeed. Other than just talking about it. Mm. So I'm telling our people here that, one, we need to know our problem. Two, based on the self-confidence that we can achieve many things, we need to get 
going and doing the things we need to do for ourselves and, and be able to achieve what we want to achieve. And there is nothing lacking, well, means, you know, there are less means than we actually need to do that, but that's not the issue. Mm. I'm always worried more about the thinking, you know, the ideology, the things you are ready to do or not to do in order to achieve uh, certain things other than just the means, because some people have means and they just end up wasting it. And in fact, building on that, I told the same people, because there is this issue of resource scarce that is always talked about. Indeed. And I'm saying, well, Indeed. for me, there can't be a worse curse than poverty <laughs> or disease or conflict. If I have the means, and these are the means, how can I fail to actually resolve these problems? Of course, people will say, no, it brings in corruption, it brings in complacency, it brings in you know, all kinds of things, people fail to manage this. Well, this is a problem, yes, but we should be able to address it. And you found a new way, in fact, to deal with it. Rather than addressing poverty, yes. you created opportunities, and I think that's what Africa needs to understand. Uh, absolutely. It's creating opportunities and putting out everybody there at the same level with the other to exercise their talent fully, and they will do it. Just give all of these people you see around an opportunity. They express themselves in all kinds of different ways that will give them what they want, and that you also what you want. As an African, as a leader of this country, as a Rwandan, how do you feel that you know the French, you know the Westerners, still believe that it's their God-given right to keep judging Africans? How do you feel about? It? How does this make you feel? I feel bad about it. I actually don't put up with it I, 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 in everyday life. I want to challenge it, but I want to challenge it. In a way, I think that has to be understood. You see, first of all, here I don't see what Rwandans cannot do that others do, and why. That's why I started saying our people need to have confidence that they can do what they need to do in order for them to make the kind of change and progress they want. But at the same time, I want to be careful by actually we also doing what is not questionable. I want to challenge these people to say, no, you, you cannot be the standard. You cannot set the standard for us that we must be like you, because nobody wants to be like you. We want to be who we are. Exactly. But we want to be better people. We want to be people who are improved in our standard of living, in our prosperity and everything, but retaining who we are. We cannot struggle to become other people. But I cannot refuse that, just that, and then not do what actually disproves their argument. I must be doing things here in Rwanda. That's right. Yes, yeah. that is right. That is not questionable, that I can justify, that I can defend and say no. What are you talking about? Are you talking about governance? This is the kind of governance that Rwandans want, that befits them, and there is nothing wrong with it. We can't go into this argument. But I cannot keep saying, you know, you West, you shut up, don't tell us this, don't tell us what to do, and mm -hmm. then at the same time, if they are talking about corruption, then corruption is rampant all around. You have to have the moral has, rights. We yeah. have yeah. To, the moral right has to be created. Yeah. So you, you cannot do one and not do the other mm -hmm. if you want, in the end, to, to win the argument. In other words, what you're saying, that it's us Africans who've allowed ourselves to be disrespected no by doubt. outsiders. No doubt about that. I think we create all grounds for that disrespect. And, and when we want to fight back, we fight back from a weak position. The best way to fight back, the best way to assert yourself, is to be in a proper position, to be doing what is right, that you can defend. 
that cannot be questioned by the other. And also be able to question what they do that may actually not be right in your viewpoint. And finally, I know you've got to go, Mr. President. Yes. What would you say are the challenges for Rwanda to have another 17 years, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years of peace? I think we, we have laid a really good uh, foundation for peace for a long time. And uh, I, I, I'm saying this confidently on the basis that most Rwandans, if not all, have bought into this project of seeing long term, you know, what we need to achieve and how to defend and protect that. And they are above all, they are part of it. Peace is there, is essential, so that within that peaceful environment, people are able to express themselves, to do things that take them from one level of standard of living to another. Absolutely. So to our people, the message is clear. Uh, and increasingly, uh, it gets clear. And we have to just keep pushing ahead uh, and looking long term. It's not something for one year, five years we look at Rwanda 20 years ahead, 30 years ahead, and so on. Mr. President, what would you say these boys represent in terms of the reconciliation that has taken place in this country? These boys, these footballers, represent the nation coming together, irrespective of the diversity in our society. It brings together all people, irrespective of their background, yeah. religion, ethnicity, whatever. It different kinds of talents and different levels of talent. So the, the, the expression cannot be put better of how the country comes together than through this team, the under 17. So this is a very good expression for me to say we want to leave poverty behind us. We want to leave any kind of conflict behind us. We want to leave disease behind us. We want to prosper. We want to move on. And as a nation, so through different activities of interaction, business, politics, and so on, we express ourselves in different ways, but we come together as a nation. And we win together as a nation. And, and you're so right, it's interesting, because when I spoke to them, I didn't want to be accused as someone who is doing a propaganda film for Rwanda. I have no reason to. Uh, um, it's because I respect what you've achieved as a nation here. But I wanted to test some of the theories. I did ask them, you know, uh, and basically, as young as they are, 16, 17, they were so switched on to say, look, we're not Hutus, we're not Tutsis. So as we're concerned, yeah. we are Rwandans, yes. period. Yeah. And you know, at this stage, to, um, for them to have this mentality, this mindset to think yeah. this way, I think it represents the hard work that the leadership has done in this country. Absolutely, it is very important. It's very important that young people like this believe it, that, and they believe it. When they told you that, it's because they believe it. No, not because they're spoon-fed yes. at all. Uh, absolutely. No. And, 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 and I'm sure maybe even for those one or two, if there would be anybody who may not believe it, starts believing it as they go along with their sporting activities. Yes, yes. that's the beauty of it. And, and, and outside this team, that's how other one is feel too. Maybe you should have uh, an opportunity to move around in the we city have. or in we the have. countryside. It's true. Yes, go to the rural areas and there should be no government official or anybody. Just ask one individual you don't know on the roadside 
they probably tell you the same. It's true. I did another program here about the refugees who are returning to Lake Kivu. I went to them. Mm -hmm. Same. So I, I don't think I have to tell you. People must have told you. Um, no matter what other people say who have agendas, I think you have to be proud of what you've achieved there, Mr. President. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really proud of uh, my people and what we've done together. And uh, I owe whatever uh, praise I get <laughs> from them. Mm. <laughs> I really owe it to them because in the end they, they are the ones who define the success. I may take it to them, have suggestions for, uh, for them and we express it, we discuss it, but for them to do things really most of the time depends on them rather than me. I can't wait to one day read your book that um, yes. will help give other African leaders yes. the, the, the recipe for this success. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm one of those Africans who want success for Africa. and I want to, to start from home. I, I want Indeed. to do as much as I can here at home. If we succeed uh, and continue to make the progress we are making, I think it's also the message it tells other Africans what well, it's mm. like if mm. Rwanda can succeed, absolutely, who can't? Yes, absolutely. Maybe all of us can succeed. That's absolutely. fine. Absolutely, that's fine.